Francisco, Scott, David, and I would like to welcome you to the 2022 Palm Sessions featured on littlearms.org as well as on its own YouTube channel. Please see any of these sources for the additional videos listed here. A big innovator in the world of brachial plexus surgery, and uh, we're really uh, happy to have him on board here to give us one of the uh, Palm Talks. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Wong. Thank you for being here. Uh, because Beijing is in the evening. Good afternoon to everyone. The title of the presentation is the contralateral C7 in children with total brachial plexus injury. So uh, because the Sarah, the 10 years recently, I have operated. Uh, I have operated about more than seven hundred cases with the total brachial plexus or nearly total brachial plexus. So in this series, there is about eighty-one cases is less than less than eighteen years old. So for the traumatic palm brachial plexus classification, we, there is four subtypes. The first is the failed nerve root aversion injury. And we can see the ganglion on every nerve root. So you can see the C5 ganglion and the C6, and this is the T1 ganglion. So all the nerve root is aversion injury. So the second subtype, you see, this is the upper track, but the proximal is not exist. So, and the T1 you can see is have the ganglion. So the upper track or the C5 or C6 may be ruptured. So this case also a total brachial plexus, plexus brachial plexus injury, but there may be nerve root exist. So the proximal nerve root can be used as a motor donor. So this is different from the failed nerve root aversion injury. During the exploration, you should carefully check up the nerve root, whether the nerve root is completely uh, the lice is normal or is very short. If the nerve root is short, the proximal may be exist. Another one is very different. So this case is a completely total brachial plexus injury. But you do the surgical exploration, you can see the brachial, nerve, brachial plexus nerve root is near normal at the little scar. Until you do the exploration to the foramen, everything is normal. But the preoperative MRI examination shows there is a fair ganglion, pseudo ganglion intradural. So this is a special injury. You can see the root lines exist, but there is no function of the upper limb. So this injury is the root light injury rupture intradural. We, we meet this situation, the operation should delay from injury to operation at least three months because some cases may be self-recovery, self uh, especially in the children traumatic brachial plexus injury, a lot of this. So, Sometimes the upper track self recovery. Sometimes the lower track self recovery. So we should be wet at three months because when you do the operation, you may see such situation. It is very difficult for you to decide. You cut off, do a repair, or still to wet. So this is especially uh, introduce a root light rupture. So we can see like this from the MR. Another subtype of the total brachial plexus injury 
is the upper track dropped at the level of the division. So that means the upper track dropped behind the clavicle. And the supraspinal nerve is distal aversion or distal injury. So you can see from the MR, the upper track is normal, but the patient is no functioning. So because the detail of the supraspinal nerve is rupture or distal aversion, so the patient's no shoulder abduction. And because the anterior division of track and the posterior division of upper track is rupture behind the clavicle, so there is no elbow flexion, no pectoral major contracture, no deltoid function. And generally, the C6 to C8 and the T1 is a rush injury. This is also a special injury. So in this uh, type, there is a lot of motor on the nerves. So for the total brachioplexus injury, uh, in all series, there is four sub types. So the diagnosis mostly be based on the physical examination and the MRI. Sometimes, occasionally, we use the CTF. And sometimes, not every case, not routinely, use the electrophysiology study. Sometimes it's needed. And if we meet a total brachial plexus injury, we, if you plan to repair the active pickup function, at least to restore five functions, this is Doyle's suggestion, I agree with this. The five function should abduction and external rotation. The second, elbow flexion and elbow teaching. And the difficult is figure flexion and figure extension. So the five function you should apply the to repair before you do the operation. Otherwise, there is no use for, for the hand. So our department use a new desired multiple nerve transfer in total brachial plexus. So we, every case uh, for the children with the brachial plex, total brachial plexus injury, we usually use the nerve transfers. And how to repair, the, how to restore figure flexion, and we use the contralateral C7, direct repair the lower track, and you through the prespinal route. So the contralateral C7 uh, cut off at the distal level of the posterior division, the anterior division, and design this section to the foramen. So the lines of the C7 is adult is about seven centimeters. In the children is about five centimeters. So the contralateral C7 transferred to the injury side through the short way, short route. So passed behind the vertebrae artery. This is the lung calling muscle. And this is anterior scalene nurse. And this is the esophagus, the prespinal pass through the pre-vertebrae space. So the contralateral C7 can arrive to the near the vertebral artery of the injury, the, near the cervical artery sheath. So this is the short way of the contralateral C7 transfer. And we use, this is the big show that the contralateral C7, you see, this is the contralateral C7. And the number one indic indicated the phrenic nerve. And the number two indicated the anterior scalene nerves. And the detail of the C7, the C7 is pulled behind the C7, uh, scale, anterior scalene nerves to the anterior of the scalenes. And then passed behind the esophagus. And the lower track, you see, this is the lower track. 
we do the long distance this section up to, to the middle level of the up arm. You can see this is the lower track, and this is the middle cord, and the middle cord of the middle nerve. This is the lateral cord of the middle nerve. This is the ulnar nerve, and this one is MEBC. So the lower track dissected to the middle level of the upper arm, and the bridge to the pectoral major, and to the and the accessory to the upper arm cut off. So sometimes need a limited shorten. In the children, usually about two centimeters. And then we fixed the osteotomy. And sometimes need retighten to the bicep. And the neurography site at the space between the uh, SCM space. This is the SC, this is the SCM. This is the contralateral C7, and this is the lower track. We can do the direct coaptation. So six weeks need space fix the hide and the upper extremity for six weeks. And this case is about 12 months, 12 years old, and completely total brachial plexus injury on the left. And the contralateral C7 is about 35 centimeters. This is the lower track. We do the dissection to the uh, middle level of the upper arm. And about six weeks after the breath take out, we can see the incision, the normal side, injury side, and the uh, infraclavicular incision. And the shorten of the humerus about two centimeters. And two years follow up, you can see the figure flexion is very strong in children. And another question, a problem is to repair the figure ectition. And the figure ectition is more difficult to reconstruction than the figure flexion. So we, after the control lateral C7 transfer, the remaining donor nerve, motor donor nerve, such as the intercostal nerve, phrenic nerve, accessory nerve, motor bridge of the cervical plexus is very small. If you use this donor nerve, repair the radio nerve, and the result is not satisfactory because the donor nerve is very thin. So we find the posterior division of lower track, PDLT, is a very important physical for the figure ectition and the long head of triceps. So we find the PDLT is very important. It's a recipient nerve for figure ectition. So this is a case in children with the C8 and the T1 of injury. You can see the ganglion. We can see the posterior division of lower tract is very thin. This is the lower tract. This is the anterior division of lower tract. That is also the, we call the middle cord. So the posterior division of lower tract is for ectition. The anterior division of lower tract is for flexion. So they are two different function. Usually we cut off the PDRT from this level. And another thing shows the PDRT is very thin. This is the C8 and the T1, this is the lower track. This is the anterior division of lower track. This for figure flexion. And this one is PDLT for figure ectition. And this is C5, C6, C7. Sometimes we can find the PDLT uh, superclavical. Sometimes we find the PDLT behind the clavicle. So we use the phrenic nerve to the posterior division of lower tract can do the direct coaptation. This is the phrenic nerve, direct coaptation, the posterior division of lower tract. The diameter is nearly similar. So we use the three donor nerves in one procedure to repair five functions 
accessory nerve to the serous capillary nerve for shoulder abduction and external rotation. Contralateral C7 direct coaptation with the lower track and use MABC transfer to the muscular cutaneous nerve for elbow flexion. So contralateral C7 for finger flexion, wrist flexion, and elbow flexion, two functions. And the phrenic nerve direct repair the PDLT for elbow ectation. The elbow ectation mostly from the long head of the tricep and the figure ectation. So we use this figure to show the accessory nerve to the cerebral scapular nerve. And the lower track direct coaptation with the, the contralateral C7 direct repair the lower track and MABC and another serial graft together to the muscular cutaneous nerve. And the phrenic nerve directly repairs the posterior division of lower track for figure ectation. If all the function recovered to fit to good to re good result, such as at least the multiple achieved M3 or over M3, and then we do the second, the second stage operation, uh, such as wrist stability, and uh, some opposition should be done. And uh, for the children, we usually use the tenodesis of the ECRB, and we also use the FCU for the some for the some opposition reconstruction. And if the children over ten years old. We also use a local fusion of the reason. And the detailed radius epiphysis is not this strong. We use the external physician. This case is a local fusion after the wrist. So this is the case. P suffered the total brachial plexus with about seven years old and uh, we can see the result about six months, six years follow up. You can see the figure equation and the function, elbow flexion. So you can, you can see the reorganization is also good in the children. And after the harvest of the phrenic nerve in children, most of the case is about one intercostal nerve elevation of the diagram. In this series, we have not seen one case, have not seen one case with elevation of the diagram more than two intercostal nerve species. So mostly it's safe in the children, but we harvest the uh, phrenic nerve in the children is usually older than two years. So this is another case about two years after this procedure. We can see the figure for like, you can see the figure extension and the grasp and the reorganization of the normal hand. But you, but you can see the figure, you can see the figure flexion is completely, figure flexion is very good. And you can see the keys can do the active pickup function. We use the breeze, but we can see three years follow up. Three years follow up, there is very different. You can see the video. You can see this figure, they cannot flex the finger. You can see the injury the said, he cannot, he cannot completely do the flexion of the figure. What is the reason? At the beginning, he can do the figure flexion. 
and the flexion is completely. But three years follow up, he cannot. So we find the interosinous muscle function recover. And the function of the interosinous muscle is flex the NP joint and extend the PIP joint. So the FDA, FDP is bigger flexion. So there is a conflict of the FDP with the interosinous muscle. So at last, uh, maybe the interosinous muscle function is strong because the interosinous muscle and the FDP all from the contralateral C7. So the interosinous muscles, intrinsic muscle recovery may be not good for the hand function. So this is very different in the children. And if the children has one nerve root exist, the result is very different in children. And this case is about six years old. And you can see the C5 is rupture. And the C6 to T1 is a varsha injury. This is the ganglion. And the phrenic nerve to the portal division of lower tract. And the contralateral C7 direct repair the lower tract and the muscular cutaneous nerve. And we use the C5 to repair the serious nerve and the deltoid and the accessory nerve use the nerve graft. So we can see four years follow up the function of the reorganization of the injury hand very, very good. And the hickorite. So in our series, there is about 81 children with traumatic near total brachial plexus injury plus total plexus injury. And in this series, 41 is with nerve, with residual nerve root exist. And the 30 kids is completely injury. This is the material of 71 kids. And this is the case with all the nerve root rush injury. And this is the material of every patient. And all finally, about 57, 57 kids with the total brachioplexus injury can do the active pickup function use our procedure after the more than two years follow up. And uh, the rate is about 18%. So a good result in the adolescent children with traumatic recuperation injury. So we also use the contralateral C7 transfer in the OBPP, only one case I show to everyone. So the indication for the OBPP use the contralateral C7 is only one nerve root exist, or no nerve root exist, because no nerve root exist is rare, rarely. Sometimes we can meet the case with only one nerve root exist. So this case is uh, three months old children with OBPP, and the C5 rupture, and the C6 to T1 avarsh injury. We use the accessory nerve to the serious nerve, and the C5 direct repair the C8. Uh, we do the direct coaptation and use the nerve graft to the anterior division of upper tract for able flexion. So C5 repair two functions, big flexion and able flexion. We use the contralateral C7 to the portal division of C7 of the injury side for figure flexion and elbow flexion. Together, portier division of up track, we use a low graft. And to the C portier division of C7, use auto graft. So you can see this is the contralateral C7. 
then use the auto graph, serial graph, two binders, and the one is loop graph. So this is the normal injury set. And uh, through the principal route, the size of the bridge nerve is about four centimeters. Because in children, the nerve graft is limited because his leg is very short. So we use a low graft plus the auto graft to use the contralateral C7 as the dotted nerve. And this is the case. More than six years follow up, you can see the shoulder abduction. And uh, the delta of recovered because the delta and the figure extension from the contralateral C7. And the delta used the low graft. And the figure extension, we use the autograph. And we can see the video. You can see the whole nut set still exist. After the contralateral C7 harvest, we can see the normal, we can see the normal head function is normal. It's normal. And we can see the figure flexion from the C5. And the figure extension, and the figure extension from the contralateral C7. And we do the MRI examination uh, after six, six years. You can see the C5 to the lower track. And this is the contralateral C service through the principal route. So conclusions, in early research, contralateral C7 to repair the hand function can achieve good result. And the children reorganization after contralateral C7 transfer is good. So this, is Dr. Da visitor or department. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Wong. Scott, do you want to take it? Dan, I just got to say, I've heard this talk multiple times and I continue to be impressed. I mean, talk about innovation when it comes to children with brachial plexus palsy. And as you know, Dr. Wang, you're, you're teaching or felt in Philadelphia when Dan and I do a global brachial plexus. And we really do appreciate your, your contribution. I just, and Dan, you may have to help me with this. I don't quite understand the specific graft or transfer to the posterior division of the lower trunk. Like why is, why is that, why does that not happen from the contralateral C7? What, sorry, you, you yeah. miss the posterior division of lower trunk PDRT? Yes. Yes. Uh, why the PDRT is very important for the figure extension and for the elbow extension. So if the C5 and the C7 completely injury, all in the lower track is normal. The figure function is normal, it's okay. If, all, if the upper track and the middle track completely injury, all in the lower track is normal. The hand function is near normal. Is okay. Yeah, I, I think. So my, I think the 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 reason, if my memory serves right, so the I think part of the reason you do it is because of the cortical representation. So if you're taking the contralateral C7 to the lower trunk, then um, you're getting finger flexion yeah right? and you're getting and it, because you're also transferring from that to the musculocutaneous nerve you're getting elbow flexion so you're getting finger yeah. flexion elbow flexion yeah but i think your point is to cortically that's very difficult for the brain to interpret then having the posterior division of the lower trunk also do elbow extension and finger extension and that's why you 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 get this sort of cortical misrepresentation or you don't get you, 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 get, you confuse the brain by separating those out so that you have finger extension and triceps coming from something else, then yeah. the goal is that your, your brain adapts a little bit better because you now have two sources, one for flexion, flexion, and the other one for extension, extension. 
Is that correct? Yeah, okay. So one donor nerve to recover two functions, it is very, very difficult for the patients, the rehabilitation. If such as because you are the phrenic nerve for the, so for the elbow extension, it, because your phrenic nerve repairs the posterior division of lower track. So the elbow extension and the finger extension all from the phrenic nerve. And the elbow flexion and the finger flexion from the contralateral C7. One nerve to repair two functions, the rehabilitation is very, very difficult because he grasp some things. You, you can see this again, uh, just a moment. When he do some things, he grasp something is easy. And he, if something, he make something to the distal elbow extension, and the figure is also extension, something may be drop. If you do something, you do the elbow extension, and at the same time, the figure is also open. And the, the things in the hand is very, is drop. So sometimes it's very, very difficult. So, Maybe we need uh, further to separate it, but there is no, no donor nerves. So this is a very difficult problem. And for the children, after three years rehabilitation, if the function is okay, if the function is very good and no problem, he can separate it. But in the adult, it's very difficult. So this is the problem. When we were to repair two functions, there are some problems, but we try to do some things to overcome this, but very difficult. And, and Dr. Wang has a, has a second question that uh, Chesco asked. If you have multiple nerve root ruptures, right, will you try to graft separately to the posterior division of the lower trunk compared to the lower trunk? In other yeah. words, say you do, okay. Yeah, because just like if you repair the portier division and the anterior division together with one donor nerve, when the regenerated nerve to the anterior and the portier area separately, because the portier division's function is a figure extension, <laughs> and the anterior division's function is a figure flexion, at last may be conflict because the donor nerve is not the original. There is a change. There is from the contralateral C7 or from the C7 or, or the residual nerve root C5 or C6. So with the regenerated nerve root to different functioning nerves, there may be a conflict. It is very difficult for the patient to use the hand. So we should separate it. We only repair one function, not two. Especially to different function, this is the problem. Yeah, I don't. I have to just tell you, in all honesty, I don't think Dan and I really have thought about what you just mentioned, or, or we do it routinely. I think going forward, we will try to reinnervate the posterior division of the lower trunk separately than the lower trunk. That was the, for me. That was the big take home point today. There's also a question out there about: Do you see temporary paresthesias from your contralateral C7 nerve transfer in adults? Is there some numbness that goes away? From the don't, let me, let me back up. From the donor, donor deficit, do you see any motor or sensory deficits that then improve over time? Sorry, Dr. Okay. Ka, can you help me to, to what is the question of contralateral C7? What is the meaning of the causing this question? Dan, Sorry. you want me to try? You want to try? Yeah, so, so, yeah. so, um... Do you see Absolutely. on the normal side, do you ah. see on the, the donor side, so the good side, yeah. do yeah. you see a deficit in tri a triceps weakness or oh, numbness okay. in the hand? Yeah, and how, yeah. Often, how often do you see that and how long does it take to recover? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very important question. The problem is uh, if you first do the contralateral C7 harvest, you are afraid of the a uh, normal had a function. So in over about uh, now, about 20 years, I have more than, oh, I have no, at least the 2000 case of the contralateral C7 harvest. 
the sometimes there there may be anatomy variance. So very important is when you cut off the contralateral C7, especially posterior division of the C7, you should not injury the posterior division of lower tract. Because you harvest the posterior division of C7, for the figure equitation, all able equitation, mostly from the posterior division of lower tract. Because the C7, you cut off at the more digital level. So it is easy injury the posterior division of the lower tract. Very rarely, sometimes the posterior division of lower tract in the very high level drawn the, drawn the posterior division of lower tract. The posterior division of lower tract is, is a very high level drawn the uh, C7 posterior division. So when you cut off the potty division of C7, you first should desecrate the C7 to the proximal, to the near the foramen, to see whether there is another bindings of fascicle to join the potty division of C7. I meet two keys. Just I cut off the C7 potty division. I stop to see the proximal, find one, physical boundary drawn the C7 portal division. So this is the portal division of the lower tract. If you cut off the C7 at the same time, you cut off the portal division of lower tract. So the patient lost the function. So this is very important. If you cut off the portal division of C7, you should first desecrate the C7 to the proximal, to the more proximal, artery to the foramen to see there is no other there is no virus you can cut off. When you cut off, you pay more attention to the portal division of the lower tract. Otherwise, there is no problems. Yeah. No, we just, uh, Dan and I feel the same way. We will not cut the donor until we find the posterior division of the lower trunk, for sure. Because yeah. that's, that's, that's a devastating mistake, actually, in an era. So it's very important. Um, Tesco, should we call it quits? I think. What do you think? Yeah, I think we're we're a little we're, we're, we're right over time, but uh, I I want to thank uh, the other two speakers. Um, yeah, that was a phenomenal session, and uh, I certainly learned a lot. I think Scott, we we both learned a lot. I hope everyone on the call has learned a lot. Um, thank you guys for doing this uh, so late in the evening in, in Dr. Wong's case. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but uh, thank you guys and it's a wonderful session and uh, next month we are not going to have a poem session we're going to have the resonant uh, course so look for us again starting again in March and we're going to skip February so unless you have do you want to have any further announcement to Francisco that we, we, the, the program for the fracture course, we, we will send uh, to everybody the program in, in a few days. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so encourage your residents to join should be a very good, quick and, and informative session. And again, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys uh, hopefully soon. Thank you for watching. For more videos like this, please see our YouTube channel, Little Arms, as well as our webpage, www.littlearms.org.